Although the samurai were predominantly men, some women trained as onamusha and fought alongside them. These women learned to wield weapons to protect themselves and their homes during war times. Japanese history is full of people, art, and ideas that have become essential to the international landscape. Most people could recognize ninjas, haikus, and Buddhist Zen masters who still capture our attention today. Japan is one of the modern world's most advanced nations, filled with technological achievements. But the story of the samurai continues to catch people's attention. They were ancient warriors who shaped Japanese society, especially as the military became even more important to their growing nation. The samurai became essential to Japanese life, influencing every aspect of it and moving Japan into the country it is today. Where did the samurai come from? The samurai first emerged during the early medieval period of Japanese history. But at the beginning of this era, the emperor struggled with the nobility to control his own empire. Part of the unrest came from the fight for the imperial throne preceding the period. The Fujiwara clan held the imperial throne, but there was tension over which member actually had it. Emperor Shirakawa exasperated this tension by creating the Insei system of government in 1086. Japanese emperors did not always rule until death. Some retired or abdicated, and Emperor Shirakawa maintained his power by creating a new office called the Innocho. The office was for ex-emperors, allowing them to become the power behind the throne. It was beneficial for regencies, and there were many child emperors leading up to the early medieval period. As the Fujiwara clan battled for control of the throne, they also had to manage civil unrest and competing families. Politics surrounding relations with the Minimoto and Taira clans made control of the imperial government difficult. The civil unrest continued to increase, and clan disputes began to leave the political court and disrupt daily life. The imperial government was not strong enough to stop the unrest, allowing bandits a strong foothold in the country. The chaos permitted the military clans to grow in strength and achieve power and prestige by the mid-1100s. This was important to them because the nobility had previously barred them from this honor. In fact, Taira no Tadimori became ex-Emperor Toba's personal retainer. Although the elite looked down on the warrior clans, other landowners amassed private armies, eventually becoming samurai. The development of the warrior class was relatively new in Japanese history. Before, the army had used peasant conscripts, but developing professional warriors changed the dynamics of the military mainly because these warriors were loyal to landowners, not the imperial government. Establishing good political ties with the warrior clans became more critical for maintaining imperial power than ever before. Ex-Emperor Go Shirakawa followed in his predecessor's footsteps and aligned with Taira no Kiyomori, a strong military leader who also gained a high political office. Taira no Kiyomori was essential to stopping revolts and containing ruffians, including armed Buddhist monks. However, his influence grew too great, and the Taira clan became too strong for the ex-emperor's comfort. Ex-emperor Go Shirakawa tried to oust Taira no Kiyomori several times politically, but Kiyomori held a coup in 1179 that left the ex-emperor under house arrest and a new emperor on the throne. The Taira raid was harsh and quickly encouraged the Minamoto clan to rise up and begin the Genpei War. Historians march the beginning of Japan's early medieval period with the Genpei War which lasted from 1180 to 1185. Both the Minamoto and Taira clans were military groups who had risen to political prominence by battling the Amishi, robbers, and local revolts. The war was essentially a battle between the two clans to see who was more robust, and it began when ex-emperor Go Shirakawa's other son requested help from Minamoto no Yoritomo to take the throne. He felt like the ex-emperors had ignored him long enough and wanted his turn to rule. Minamoto jumped at the opportunity to fight Taira no Kiyomori, and even though the prince died a few weeks into the war, Minamoto kept up the fight to gain power for his clan and bypass the imperial capital. Taira no Kiyomori appeared to be winning at the beginning of the war, but he died in 1181 from an illness. Other members of the Taira clan took up the war, but their position was weaker now. The war remained confined to the eastern part of Japan for several years. In 1183, Minamoto no Yoritomo sought support from ex-emperor Go Shirakawa. He received permission to expand the war into the west as a designated peacemaker. In 1184, Yoritomo consolidated the Minamoto clan back under his rule and marched west to finish the Taira clan. They fought for another year, 
finally culminating the war in the Battle of Dan no Ura. It was an impressive naval battle at the Shimonoseki Strait. Although the struggle started with the Taira clan in the lead, the Minamoto clan won the battle after one of the Taira generals switched sides. It was a devastating loss for the Taira clan, and the Genpei War was over about a month after this battle, marking the end of the Taira rule and the rise of the Minamoto clan. The Genpei War ended the Insei system and moved Japan into a more feudalistic system. Yoritomo appointed military stewards and governors, giving the military class even more power. These warriors were not yet samurai as we know them today, though. Instead, they were called bushi or subwai. They were usually cavalry archers, although they did use daggers and swords once they used all their arrows. These early warriors developed into the samurai warriors we know today with their strict code of ethics and strong military skills that continue to amaze us today. What did the samurai add to Japanese history? Japanese society was a strict, structured hierarchy, and as they adopted a more militaristic culture, they began giving more honor to the warriors like the samurai. They started as the soldier class of the warrior group. They were actually higher-ranking warriors who also had political influence and ruled large estates or even the country. These leaders tended to come from the nobility. Although some samurai held estates and had an education, they were mainly focused on their fighting skills. Samurai did not have to be nobility. They had ordinary foot soldiers underneath them and reported to leaders higher up the social ladder. But they were special because samurai worked for landowners and nobility. When they weren't on the battlefield, they spent most of their time tending their land, although samurai did not usually have much. Although samurai were not always loyal in their allegiance, the mythos around the samurai secured their position of honor in Japanese and world history. The samurai had a code of conduct inspired by Confucianism, which centered on loyalty and integrity. Of course, not all samurai were honorable, and some were renowned for their cruelty. However, as time progressed, the samurai became romanticized, and honor and loyalty became integral to the samurai image. They were expected to maintain their reputation and perform their duty to everyone. These expectations included getting married to promote social harmony. However, there were no set rules until the Tokugawa regime when the Bushido, or the way of the warrior, was compiled as a guide. Samurai, who did not adhere to the code of conduct, were expected to commit suicide by ripping their stomachs open. It was gruesome, but the Japanese believed it would restore personal and family honor, which was an essential part of the samurai. The romantic image of the samurai also included swords, which became a class symbol. Early samurai usually used bows and arrows, or naganata, which were metal or wooden poles with a blade on one end. It was a spear and sword combination, but even early samurai had swords. They usually have a long and short sword, but they only use the blades to duel or as a last resort in battle. Despite this, swords became essential to the samurai image, and by the late medieval period, sword making had become a highly skilled craft. Sword makers learned how to create high quality swords with as little iron ore as possible, using layers and folding to create impressive weapons. Samurai used swords like katanas, although samurai didn't use them as often as media portrays, tachis, tantos, and wakazashis. They ranged in size from 1 to 4 feet. The samurai treated their swords as family heirlooms alongside their armor. They used lamellar armor, made from small scales made of iron or leather. Later, some wealthy samurai moved to plate armor to protect them from guns. They also had special helmets called kabuto. They had iron or steel flaps extending down the sides and back of the neck to provide protection. The kabuto was decorated with ornaments and regalia to show allegiance and inspire fear in their enemies. The helmets were a powerful reminder that samurai were skilled warriors with firm commitments and high personal and family honor. Were there other warriors than the samurai? Even though samurai were the most well-known Japanese warriors, many others were involved in the medieval warrior class. The generals tended to be nobility, and in the early medieval period, almost all of the soldiers on the battlefield were professionals. Armies were relatively small because the elite had to pay their soldiers, so battles were small. Some were even decided by single duel between the two generals. However, the wars soon grew larger, casualties increased, and other soldiers joined the samurai in battle. The nobility swelled their army ranks with ashigaru, lightly armored foot soldiers. Some of these soldiers were conscripted peasants, and few had any substantial military education. The ashigaru used pole weapons and wore simple armor and cone-shaped helmets. Some soldiers were also trained to use bows and arrows and, later on, firearms like muskets. 
the Ashigaru were seen as more replaceable than the samurai, placing them lower in the social hierarchy. Another type of soldier in medieval Japan was the Sohai, which can be translated as a warrior monk. They first appeared to protect Buddhist temples during times of civil unrest, but they were more often than not a danger to society. They were well-armed, skilled, and interested in expanding the temple lands, even if that meant robbing the peasants. They did not usually participate in the nobility's armies, although the nobility fought against them often. A third type of warrior in medieval Japan was the shinobi, known today in the Western world as the ninja. Although ninjas have been romanticized as acrobatic assassins who only wear black, the shinobi in medieval Japan was slightly different. They didn't usually wear all black. Instead, shinobi dressed to blend in with the world around them, and they were more interested in sabotage or espionage, although assassinations did happen. Ninjas were similar to the samurai because they were professionals, and the nobility and military leaders paid them. Samurai even began learning some of the shinobi's skills and tools, increasing their adaptability. Although people today continue to be fascinated with ninjas, the shinobi died out in the early 17th century. Many other Japanese warriors faded away in the 17th century as well, including the samurai. They became floating men who eventually wandered into the pages of history, but the mark they left on Japan is still evident today. Japan's society has maintained its militant spirit and emphasis on honor, yet it is a vibrant modern country with much to share with the world. In their stories of the samurai, we remember the importance of loyalty during uncertain times and the great value of personal honor. The samurai were more than just professional soldiers. They were also instrumental in shaping Japanese society into the country it is today. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. I hope you found this video to be captivating. To learn more about ancient Japan, check out our book, Ancient Japan, a captivating guide to the ancient history of Japan, their ancient civilization, and Japanese culture, including stories of the samurai, shoguns, and zen masters. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free mythology bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.